thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. That is very serious. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. So if you want to know why negative things pop up in your life, think about the words that you speak. Even in joking, there are things, some things that you really shouldn't even joke about. And I remember hearing Miriam say many years ago, she said, I do not like jokes. She said, I can't stand them. She said, because there's always someone the brunt of a joke. Okay. So Proverbs 6, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Well, how come this isn't happening? The Lord I know told me he was gonna, I, I was going to be this or I was going to do this, but it never happens. Why? Your words stopped it in motion. Your words Thou art taken, what, taken, brought captive under the words that come out of your mouth. You're brought into captivity with the words that come out of your mouth. So, what, who's always there? The enemy was there when we were born. He didn't go hide and just let us grow up. He was there watching. So I kind of looked up a couple of words in Noah Webster's 1828 dictionary. And it's a participle, simple passive. And it says entangled. Unexpectedly involved in difficulty <laughs> are taken. That's the definition. Unexpectedly entangled, entangled, and many people are entangled in their life, and unexpectedly involved in difficulties because of the words that come out of your mouth. Is that the Snared. Snared, yeah, snared. snared. Are taken, so it says, are taken, have been caught. Your words can get you caught. Faith filled words will put you over. Fear filled words will defeat you. Words are the most powerful thing in the universe because if you go back to Genesis, Jesus, uh, God created everything with words. Okay. Words are most powerful. They can destroy. They can wound. Words, when you think about words, you have to think about something before it comes out of your mouth because once it's come out of your mouth, it's, it's, it's started, it's going to operate. Entangled unexpectedly. Wow. Involved in difficulty. are taken, have been caught. So our words, we can get caught. And that word, the moment you speak it, it already starts working, either for you or against you. So I wonder why we would speak something negative, jokingly, or under pressure, out of our mouth when we're believing for something else. We're believing for one thing, 
but we're speaking something totally different that has hindered what we're believing from coming to pass because you've opened the door. And God's words are not negative. Everything about the kingdom of God is, 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 is positive. Okay. Faith-filled words will put you over. Fear-filled words will defeat you. Words are the most powerful thing in the universe. If, 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 it weren't, if words weren't so powerful, why would God use, start the worlds and frame them with his words? Because that's what he wanted to happen. And when you say words that take you captive, you put faith in those words when you speak them. People can say, well, I'm just kidding. There are things as a believer you never kid about. Amen. Your health, your prosperity, mm -hmm. your calling, your purpose, your destiny. These things you just don't say words about. And we wonder why, well, I asked the Lord for this. I'm standing in faith. But you have ten words of curse words before you stood in faith. You cursed your faith with your words. This is why it's not a lot about um, why, why didn't I get this because I was believing for this or why didn't God do this for me because I was believing for this. Well, you know, I guess, well, I guess he's not going to do it because other people he didn't do it for. So he's not. I have never had those thoughts in my mind. But most people have them because they, it slips out of their mouth jokingly. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I, we say, well, I can't do this, and I don't know how to do that. And, 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 and you know, um, uh. Well, maybe the Lord's not going to heal me this time. Uh, maybe he didn't hear me. Maybe he allowed this to happen to me. I don't find that. He says, by his stripes you were healed. All things are possible to him who believes. I don't, when I go before God, I don't go before God with somebody else's faults or their slips or their negativity or it didn't happen for them. They didn't get this. They didn't get that. I don't go before God like that. I go before God with his word for me. We forget on the cross, he took every sickness, disease. He took poverty. He took lack. He took every problem, every pain, everything on the cross. And he died for us. And so when I think about it, I think people don't know the cross. They have no idea what the cross is. They've mentally ascended. Most people have mentally ascended to a lot of knowledge that they do not have revelation over and about. They have no revelation because when you have revelation about something, you don't speak the opposite. Okay? You wouldn't allow that to come out of your mouth. So the enemy comes in, little snake. It's only, it's, oh, it's just only, that's just pastor speaking. That's just pastor. It's only a suggestion. But you bid it. And then we get disheartened when the promises of God do not start manifesting through our life. We get a little angry with him, but we don't say we're angry. We, we, we don't say that, but we get a little angry with him. If words are the most powerful thing in the universe, I 
think I want to pay attention to what those words are, are that are coming out of my mouth that can condemn me or bring blessing into my life. We are spirit beings and very capable. We are spirit beings and we are very capable of operating on the same level of faith as God. Did you hear that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, we are spirit beings and very capable of operating on the same level of faith as God. But see, we don't look like we think, well, that, that's God. That's God. That's God. But uh, guess what? Who's in us? So if he can speak things I can speak things because the word of God tells me I can. In Matthew 17, 14, there came, uh, there came to Jesus a certain man kneeling down. This is just the middle part of that, that scripture. Kneeling down to him saying, and I want you to go with me to... Uh, Matthew chapter uh, 17. And I'm going to go to verse 15 and start there. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire, and oft into the water and I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him then Jesus answered and said "O oh, faithless and perverse generation how long shall I be with you how long shall I suffer you Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Be, you should say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. What does that say? And nothing shall be impossible unto you when you are speaking faith. And you believe that when you speak, it is already done, and you go into thanksgiving and being grateful. Now, I know we all live in the world, but the world doesn't have to live in us. Amen. Amen. We so much want to be homogenized and be like. We hinder our faith, and then we get to, we start speaking like the world over our own self, which is sabotaging the faith that you were supposed to have in the Word of God. Whatever, we're speaking spirits. Whatever the word says I am, I am. You can't tell me anything different. If he says that by his stripes I'm healed, guess what? I'm healed. Amen. I don't say, well, some people get healed and some people don't. That's a given. But you, have, you don't know their story. So to say something like that, and you don't know the backstory of that person, you are sowing into your own life death. 
Never base your faith on someone else. Base it on the word. Yes. Okay? If Jesus said this morning, and he did, I heard him. The lion of the tribe of Judah has come off the throne. The, uh, the lamb is not on the throne. The lion of the tribe of Judah is moving now. That tells you time's changed. Mm -hmm. That something's happened. Something's changed. And he's coming to fight for his people. Okay. Also, it says here, now we just received some books. <laughs> Verse 21, how be it this kind goeth not out but by <laughs> fasting and prayer. Oh, has it come to that? <laughs> I think we're in that season of fasting and prayer. I'm thinking about, this is not a theory. It is a spiritual law. Mm -hmm. Totally different. Let's go over to Ephesians 5.1. I'll read it if you can't get there. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. So if I'm following him, I'm looking at him, I'm imitating him, and I'm doing what he does. I'm speaking like him, I'm thinking like him, and I'm not going to entertain the little devil's words, thought processes. I'm not going to let him seed me. Now, a lot of times we get seeded by other people who don't have the knowledge of the word that you have. And they will seed you with their thoughts, and you'll take those thoughts because you meditated on it. Well, I, let me think this through. Right then, instead of casting that down, taking that thought into captivity, and bring it into the knowledge of the word of God, we start thinking about it. Guess what happens? We start losing ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We start changing. Why? Because compromise has come in. And whatever I keep saying to people, whatever you compromise and keep, you're going to lose it. Yeah. Be their follower. Be therefore followers. Mm. Mm. So if I'm going to follow after Christ, I want to be like him. Yeah. I want to find out what did he do to get where he is? We read his track record in 66 books. We read the great feats and, and the things that God has done. And then he gave us Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, our provider, our deliverer, our healer. So where is our disconnect at. It's with us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the enemy sets us up with negative people that surround us. And everything is you'll say this, but, well, so-and-so didn't get that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's just, you know, everybody's, it's, that's, just, that's just the Bible. Everybody's not going to have that. They can. It's promise. All the promises of God are yes and amen to the glory of God by us. We have to prove that they work for us. And I think about words that Jesus spoke that, that they work every time. They work every time. Then how come we can't have that success? It takes dying mm -hmm. to yourself, your will, your emotions, your desires. Mm -hmm. Because if you didn't want to do that, then why did you get saved? Mm -hmm. To live out in the world? To have one foot in the world and the other foot in the church? 
doesn't work like that. You're either all in. Amen. You're either all in or all out. There are many people in church, but the church, the word of God, it's, it's not in him, in them. They come, they're convicted, they come to church, they sit. But there has to be change. The word's exciting to me. Even if I get convicted, it's exciting because I know he loves me. He's not going to let me go uh, my own way without bringing a conviction in me. That's that conviction is to say, hey, you're about off track. Come back. And if you receive that conviction, you can turn around and repent and keep moving. 